I think all of us at one point has been asked, where are we from? No, where are you from? And being Korean American is quite interesting because being from here, being born in the United States, but being constantly asked that question and then going back to Korea and them not considering me Korean e either, it made me sort of really wonder, well, where do I belong? Where I, should I, like, what is the place I should be? And I'll never understand what it feels like to be adopted, but it was my way into maybe possibly understanding a little bit, a kernel of what they might go through. I started hearing through the adopted community that some adoptees were being deported, um, which was really just sort of unfathomable to me. The fact that like a, some, a, a child who was brought from a different country, money's exchanged and brought by U.S. citizens that like 30 years later, the government would decide because of uh, loopholes of paperwork that they're not U.S. citizens anymore. It doesn't make any sense to me. and. I thought at first that it was a simple sort of, oh yeah, but you know, I'm sure like they can get a lawyer or like there's a way because it's obvious that they should belong to stay. And then I realized that that wasn't the case, that this was, there was a finality to it. Once you get deported, it's almost impossible to come back. Um, and it's a long process to try to come back. So it just broke my heart. And I heard the story of Philip Clay and how he ended up, you know, committing suicide once he was deported back to Korea. And I found out that is also like a common thing because a lot of these people, they have no connection to the country they're being deported to and they have nothing. They have no resources and no support. And it's like a death sentence. Nobody's talking about this. Nobody knows about this unless you're directly affected or you're, you know, or you have an interest in these type of things. So I felt, you know, by making a movie, if it brings the right attention to it that maybe something can change, you know, with a, you know, very optimistic, wishful thinking. You guys have sort of like seen the films I make and there's a common thread, you know, they're Asian American centric. They tend to have unconventional families and they are about families and our experience in this country in different ways. I want to bring empathy to our experience and to us so that we get normalized in this country and aren't seen as the other. That's important is we're seen in an authentic way. So for this film, I really, you know, because I do think the adoptee experience is part of the, like, very much a part of the Asian American experience. Uh, so I wanted to represent that community in an honest, truthful way um, and make sure that they were also a part of the conversation. You're looking at an Asian man. It's peculiar to see like a, you know, a Caucasian girl standing next to him. And then you see that he has an accent or the person across also has an accent and the way he's being treated. And I think in that one scene, you can understand his past, like very quickly, like what he's dealt with and, you know, his resilience and, you know, maybe who this girl is to him. And, and it's just making you catch up very quickly. I think all of us at one point has been asked, where are we from? No, where are you from? And being Korean American is quite interesting because being from here, being born in the United States, but being constantly asked that question and then going back to Korea and them not considering me Korean e either, it made me sort of really wonder, well, where do I belong? Where I, should I, like, what is the place I should be? And I'll never understand what it feels like to be adopted, but it was my way into maybe possibly understanding a little bit, a kernel of what they might go through uh, because theirs is amplified times a, a million, you know, that sort of, you know, question of identity and, and where they belong, you know, the conversation about what the physical appearance of, a, of an American is. Well, you would think if someone has a Southern accent, that's very American. But then you put an Asian face to that and it's like, wait, hold on, does that compute? Well, it all comes down to exposure if you haven't seen it. But like for someone who lives there, it's very normal. You know, New Orleans is a particular place like no other in the United States. And, you know, it's a very resilient place. You know, they've dealt with a lot of natural disasters and the fact that they're so resilient is very unique. Feels like a different country. It feels like it's basically underwater. Half the time, a lot of Vietnamese refugees were, were relocated there after the Vietnam War to, to Texas, Louisiana, and Mississippi. 
uh, was something else I wanted to showcase. Like all Asian American experiences aren't the same. So you get two different Asian ethnicities in one film. They have similarities as well. And Antonio can also see what his life in Korea could be like, like imagination wise through an adjacent Asian culture. I, I wrote this film while, while my wife was pregnant and so I did contemplate what that was going to be like and what kind of father I would be. So making it personal is a beautiful thing because, you know, it just becomes so, it matters, you know, it matters to me. And I did try to find ways into the story in a personal way, in addition to talking for hundreds of hours with adoptees and trying to find the, the right balance of authenticity. LeBlanc means the white, right? So his name is Antonio the White, right? And that was intentional. I don't know how much more, like in the sense of having an adopted name, how much more it can be ironic. Like, and the guy across from him is like LeBlanc, you know, like questioning it. And it's just like, there's so much irony from frame one, you know, and he's, that's the, but that's part of his existence. That's what he's had to deal with his entire life. So that's my purpose, you know, stepping behind the camera that's different from just performing is that I have control of the stories that get put out in the world.